Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing. And today we are going to continue our look at our titles that we have on Tabletop Simulator available through Steam. Now there have been some questions as exactly what Tabletop Simulator is and how to make it work and a couple other issues that questions that people have come up with that we want to go ahead and address and go over and get everybody up to speed on. So what you got right here is obviously you need Steam to, to have Tabletop Simulator. And basically what Tabletop Simulator is, is a digital uh, game board or digital sandbox for people to create tabletop games and import them into boards, cards, dice, all that good stuff. So I'm hoping that most of you at least have a rudimentary knowledge of what Steam and what Tabletop Simulator is, but just in case, we're going to go over a little bit. So when you get a Tabletop Simulator and you download it to Activate uh, files from the workshop and put them into the tabletop simulator so you can start actually playing them. There is one step you need to do. So what you need to do is you need to go click on your library and come up with tabletop simulator. We see that over here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit this button here for workshop. So you click on that, click on the workshop, and this will take you to the workshop. Now, what you want to do or what you can do is, you know, you have your files, all your subscribed items, but if you're looking for files new, you've got all these tabs down here, most popular, most subscribed, most recent, but you can also do a search for them right here, or of course you can just click on a link, uh, which I may provide some links down in the <laughs> comment section below, but say you're looking for World at War. So you just go ahead and type it in, hit search, and then it'll bring up everything that is related to the word search of World of War. And so what we're looking for right now is, of course, we're doing the World at War 85. This is the starter kit. Let's see if we can find the full main game because it is in here somewhere or maybe not. Yeah, 125. Yeah, okay, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's just take a look at World at War 85. So you click on the actual game itself. There's usually maybe a video, some pictures associated with it. But then you're going to find this big green button right here that says it's going to be a plus subscribed. I've already subscribed to it, so it, that's why it says checkmarked and subscribe. So if you hit the subscribe button, it'll automatically add it to your tabletop simulator library. So when you jump into tabletop simulator, it's going to give you, it's going to show up uh, on the list of the available games that you've got downloaded. And now what you also want to do is you can also go by the creator. Here we have Richtofen56, whose his name is Uwe. No, not not Uwe Eichert of Academy Games. This is another Uwe. But he has got a lot of submissions that he's worked on. I ignore the Heroes and Defiance. We're, we're working on that. That hasn't gone live. That I can see it because I'm, I'm one of the testers. But here we've got Storm in the Gap, uh, the full Storm in the Gap, World of War 85, Stalin's Triumph, Heroes Against the Red Star, Heroes of the Nam, Heroes of Normandy, yada, yada, yada. But he just doesn't have lock and load titles. He's got Old School Tactical. He's got 65, the Russia Campaign. I mean... There's a lot. I, I have been hard pressed to find games that haven't been converted over to tabletop simulator so far. It's usually a lot of the more esoteric ones are the older ones, but most anything that people do nowadays. Yeah, he's got Arab Israeli Wars, Starship Troopers, Storm Over Arnhem, Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz. So he's got a lot of a lot of uh, modules and the, these are all free. Now, Steam uh, tabletop simulator does have premium modules. Um, that you have to pay for, but you don't always, you, you don't have to if you don't want to. There's plenty of other other games, and again, you just go back to your library, you go to the workshop, put in a tie, and put in the name of whatever game you're looking for, and hopefully someone has done it already. All right, so that's how you subscribe to a game in Tabletop Simulator to get it loaded. Now, there is an issue every once in a while. Sometimes your your virus blockers will not let Tabletop uh, Simulator download the modules because they think they're a virus. You're going to have to go into your, uh, your own uh, uh, antivirus settings and make sure that Tabletop Simulator is allowed to download them. Or you can subscribe to everything you want. It's just never going to get into Tabletop Simulator because you're fire antivirus software won't let it so anyways that is how you get subscribed to something and let's go ahead and jump in a little bit more so let's go ahead and turn that off oh everybody can see my bright shining face i'm not sure that's a great thing but here we are this is tabletop simulator now it once you have downloaded modules 
chosen the modules you want to download, just go ahead and hit create. And then you can either do single or single player or multiplayer. So let's, let's go for single player right now. You click on that and then you have four buttons over here. You've got classic, which are, you know, checkers, Parcheesi, you know, these, these are already preloaded, uh, so, some preloaded games for you. Background, Backgammon, Go, you know, that those are the classics. Then you've got the DLCs. This is all the paid stuff. Um, now, these are the modules. If you want to pay for them, you can do that through, uh, through Steam, and then that'll unlock them. And with the summer sale right now, everything's 50% off. And actually, we even see Herman Lutman's Dawn of the Zeds over here. And I believe, yep, there is DVG's Warfighter as well. So there are... There are some games out there that, that you might have to pay for, but this is like, you know what, not even two pages worth of stuff. Uh, whoops. And you, I lost my, there we go. So DLC, but what you're going to want to look for is the workshop, which is the blue button right here. So you'll click the blue button, and this is a list of all the games that you have, have subscribed to. And as you can see, you know, I've got a bunch of games that I've subscribed to. Actually, not as many as some people. But anyway, so let's go ahead. And what we're going to be looking at today is World of War 85 Storming the Gap. This is not the starter kit. As you can tell, the starter kit's right here. This is this is the full normal version. So let's go ahead and click on that. Are you sure you want to load? Yes. And then if it's for the first time, it's probably going to take a little bit because it is going to, it, it's got to load all the assets. If it's not the first time, as you can see, it kind of, it kind of relatively loaded relatively quick for me. So, and as we can see, and as we've seen in the last video, we've got this 3D panoramic shot that you can scroll around the table. Now, if you want to pan the camera, you press the uh, right mouse button and that will press and hold and that will pan the camera. If you press the left button, this brings up the selection bar. So you can, you, can, you can grab multiple items at the same time. If you press the middle mouse button, either it be a scroll wheel or if it's just a press one, that will just actually shift the, 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 the table around. And of course, scrolling in, and scrolling out, you can. One thing I love about this, which is actually, in my opinion, far better than Vassal, you can scroll in so very close, and you can zoom out really far. But and then, of course, there is uh, Z, which is zoom. But I just, you know, Z is for a quick zoom in, or you can just scroll in with the mouse button in and out. Um, Let's see, what are, oh, another uh, very, very important button you're going to need to know is the Alt button. If you cursor over any table, chart, basically anything, counter, dice, anything, and press the Alt key, you get a blown up version of it. And this makes it real easy if you want to try to see or read any of the cards that are associated with the game. You just hit the Alt button and it brings it right up. And as you can see, we've got a, a bunch of the cards from the game right here for your convenience. And some of them you can see will be flipped for second side. So you just right click on the, the, the item and this brings up a drop down menu. And there's a whole bunch of different, different drop downs that you want to do. I'm not going to go over all the options that you, that you have in Tabletop Simulator. There are other videos out there that uh, Berserker Games that have done that can do a far better job than I am. But I'm going to give you the kind of the brief primers of the things you're probably going to need. Um, toggles, uh, lock is a pretty good one. Um, you're going to want to do this with map boards. If you hit the lock, you can't accidentally pick it up. See, you can't, I, I'm trying to click on it and pick it up, but it's locked, so I can't. This one isn't locked. I can pick it up and move it around and all such like that. So lock under toggles is a very important one. But there's also flip for second side, and you can just hit the F button to flip, which will flip it over for to whatever's on the back side of the counter or of the, uh, the, the card. And this can be done with, you know... All the scenario card, well, basically anything that's not locked down. And again, if you need to see what it actually is, you just hit the Alt key and that brings up a, a more proper perspective, uh, proper uh, image for you to look at. Um, now this one, this Storming the Gap version, let's go over it. Let's see what it has in it as compared to the starter kit. Wow, you cursor over, here's, here's the formation cards. There's 161 cards in there. Let's go ahead and hit the search button. If you right click on it and bring up search, 
would allow you to look at all the cards that are in this deck, all 161. Now, wow, that looks like that's all the formations from World at War. It actually is all the formations from World of War. This differs a little bit than the starter kit. Then the starter kit is just the starter kit that has the one scenario. This full size, this is the full size game. We are giving you one scenario, which is scenario one. Let's see if I can flip it over right here. Hit the alt button. And there it is. Scenario one, storming the gap. So we're giving you one scenario for free. It's got all the information on it. It's it, this, this, this is straight from the module rule book in the game itself. However, we have also made sure that we've included every single counter, every single card, pretty much every single chart you will need to play all the scenarios in the main game. Now the question may be, well, why, 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 why are you doing that if you're only giving us one scenario? Well, in conjunction with us releasing these full release games to Tabletop Simulator is we have also just released the module scenario rule books in ring bound format that you can buy and use that to play with the digital versions or even to have a copy of the game or have a copy of the, the scenarios on your own. Um, now, these ringbound scenario booklets can be bought from Lock and Load Publishing. I'll go ahead and put the link in the in the comment section below. Uh, but they are all the scenarios and all the special rules and some of the charts that you need to play the game. So if you don't have the means to spend $85, $95 for the full box set, but you still want to play, we, of course, offer the rules for free in a variety of formats all over the place. PDFs, e-readers, audiobooks, uh, uh, Kindle. I, there, there's, there's at least six different formats of the rule books that you can get out there. Now, since you can get the rule, back for, rule book for free and you're unable to afford or just don't want to buy the full set, well, now you can buy the module, the scenarios module books specifically, so you can use those books to play via digital formats, be it Vassal, be it Tabletop Simulator, and we are working on Tabletopia as well. So we've got at least three different formats out there that you can use these scenario books for. Now there's nothing new, nothing different, nothing like that in these scenario books. These are just basically the exact same thing that you get in the main box set. And they're spiral bound, so that's really cool. Um, so that is why we are releasing these in their both a starter kit format and their full format. The starter kit versions, well, not really starter kits because we are releasing all of our games to have at least one scenario in it, but you can also use, we also are giving you all the counters, maps, and everything else you need so you can buy the scenario modules and play them with Vassal, Tabletop Simulator, Tabletopia, whatever you have. It's, it's just we, we, we want to give the customers more options. So let's look at what all is in this. First of all, we got a bunch of dice. We got four US dice here. You just pick, click and pick up, or you can click like that and pick up. And we're also providing you a really cool dice roller. You just hit the R button, it'll roll it, and it'll also tell you what dice you rolled. Now the cool thing is, sometimes you might need more than four dice. Well, that's okay because if you right click on anything, there's a huge list of, of a drop down menu. You can clone anything that you've got highlighted. So you need a couple more D6. There you go. You just go ahead and you clone it. And you add it and there's your six sided dice. Now you have two different options for rolling. You can either, if it's in this little box, just hit the button to roll it and it rolls it quick like that. Or you can right click and that'll bring up the drop down menu for roll. Or my preferred method to do it, it just highlight it and hit the R button. And I kind of like hitting the R. You can, you can continually hit the R button for as long as you want to really randomize the numbers. And they'll all fall in there and all the dice in there that'll show you what you roll up there. Really convenient. You can do the same side with the NATO, with the NATO dice. Uh, we have most of the charts available here in uh, Tabletop Simulator. The modifier... Now, there are 20, 30 charts in <laughs> World at War. Not really able to get them all in here. However... Most of those are included in the scenario module book that you can buy from us anyways. Um, the most prevalent 
charts that you're going to need terrain effects charts the line of sight chart the uh, let's take a look at that one the direct fire modifiers and let's go ahead and flip it over and thermal imaging rules they're all provided there there are a couple charts that didn't make it in mainly because they're not that important to immediate gameplay um so that's that oh let's uh, let's go ahead this is one thing I, I i found out recently and one of the things i like about this table if you cursor over these drawers and that red button pops up you can open them and that'll give you extra space to lay out counters and such and each side has three of these drawers that you can open up i thought that was just the coolest thing when uve pointed that out to me so if you need to store more counters off board, you've got that. Uh, and then again, or, or not again, but of course, we've got this massive, lovely uh, track here that tracks everything. High explosive, your chemical strikes on both sides, your MLRS, whatever. There's the weather track, the turn track, the formation cards, the discards. So if you want to... You know, you put your formation cards here, and the discards will go there. You've got boxes for the HQ and some support weapons ready to deploy, suppressed headquarters, casualties. That's all provided on here for you, and I think that's great. And, of course, that's locked, but if you wanted to, you could go in and unlock that and pick it up and move it however you want. You can't really change the size of the table. I think there's an option but don't quote me on that. I've never tried to or I've never had to. And as we can see here, we have two maps set up already. Map 1 and Map 2. Well, some of the scenarios require three maps or sometimes even four maps. You're not going to get all four maps on here. What you can do is, is what you do is you unlock it. And let's go ahead and take a look because we do have... The map crate so let's go ahead and search the map crate oh look at this we've got more maps in here now we are providing both the winter and the summer version of each map and the kickstarter exclusive map for world at war is included here as well so basically you just need to decide which or not decide but look at what maps you need uh, and you don't want to delete anything. If you, if you need map one and two, and then say you need also map three for some reason, just make sure you don't delete anything. Because if you delete it, you can't. I, you can hit the re rewind time. So like say for example, you accidentally. Oops! I accidentally deleted board three. There's the rewind time button that goes back about ten seconds, and you can keep hitting that, and it does go back uh, quite a distance. But so you get. So obviously we cannot fit all three of these maps. On this table well what you do is you go ahead and you grab all three maps like this right click on it bring down the scale to the scale oh, I didn't grab map 2 but you just scale the maps down however far you need to go and this is why I suggested whoops not up Try to, okay, let's go ahead and go back in time a bit to where they're all... Okay, so they're all here. Let's go ahead and make sure we have all the maps. Why is it, okay. Do, 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 do. Or you can stack the maps on top of each other. And if you hit G... Oh, that, yeah, wow, that, isn't, that, that doesn't work. Normally with decks of cards, if you have multiple cards, you can kind of hit the G button. But regardless... The scale button, you can use the scale button to scale the maps and the counters down to whatever size you need. And you can rotate the maps, like we have, we got the rotate option here. So you can rotate and scale the maps however you need, and that will get the maps to fit on the table. It's a little bit of work that you have to do on your own. But, you know, it's, it's, it's far less cumbersome than trying to uh, uh, pull out the game and set up the game on your own. So the maps as they are set are good for one or two mappers battles. If you have a three or a four, then, yeah, obviously you're going to have to scale things down. And you are going to have to... Whoops. We'll take it back the other way. Scale... Keep scaling them. And it takes a little bit of work, but eventually you'll get the scale right. And there's not that many scenarios that you're going to have to deal with that with. 
See, that probably needs to go up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and move this map back into the map box. Actually, I think that went into the admins marker, but you know, it, this is this is this is all the scaling there. Oh, one more. This is why you try to want to grab all of them at the same time, so they uh, so you can they all scale at the same <laughs> same rate. Uh, Get it lined up as best you can, and then just lock them into place like so. Actually, the scale is still a little bit off, but you understand what I'm saying. Scale. Of course, my OCD is not letting me get away without having it as perfect as I can get it. But there you go. And you make sure you lock it. So that's how you take care of the issue of, okay, we got a three scenario map, but the table isn't that big. You just have to scale the maps and the counters. So, and let's go ahead and take a look at, okay, so let's take a look at the West Germans. Again, this is the full counter set. I mean, every counter that's in the game is provided to you in the tabletop simulator version. So you can play all the scenarios from the World at War 85. We haven't done uh, Storm and Steel yet. Um, I think we're working on that. David hasn't said anything, so don't hold me to that, but I think it's in the works. Um, so there's all the, there's all the uh, German counters, and basically what you do... If you need them, you just pull them out of the box. You just use the search feature like I did earlier. Again, you right-click on something that brings up the drop-down menu, and you go to search, and that brings up a list of everything. Now, there's only one of everything in the game. So if you pull out, so say, for example, like the counter I already did, and we can either zoom in yeah, now to that. Yeah, see, the counters didn't scale, so you're going to have to scale the counters down if you scale the map down or scale the counters up but you zoom in or you can hit the the uh the the oh cons the alt button right there to kind of bring up a bigger version of but if you need multiple of those well just right click on it and go to the clone option and you can clone out however many you need for the scenario now the thing is the person who set up the room is going to have to do all the cloning i think there's a way that they can give a permissions but i'm not really sure uh i would i would recommend looking to a more uh, tabletop simulator oriented video to find that so the person who hosted the game is going to have to duplicate all the counters but you know if you're playing as the soviets you can pull out whatever counters and you know set them off to the side and say hey i need these cloned and then you then you'll have them all right there uh good and proper and so we don't need all those so let's go ahead and make sure we delete that so, and then once we get them all, well, let's just go ahead and show you how this multiple scaling works. So, clone. You just click on them. You left click and you drag around all of them. And then that just brings up the, the drop down menu. And then you just scale it to whatever size you want. Bam! There you go. That's how you. That's how you scale multiple uh, counters with the same command. It probably could be afford to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, something like that. That works. And you do have to do that with all the counters. So you probably want to pull out the admin counters at the same time and make sure you get them done at the right size. Like I said, there's not a lot of scenarios that are three or four mappers, but for the occasional one that you decide to play. Uh, that, that there you go. That's that's the resolution for that. Um, so we've got U.S. forces. Let's look what we got in here. Oh yeah, the map accidentally. Uh, let's go ahead and put the map in the main. Oh come on, go into the map. Why isn't it going into the map? Oh well. Anyways, it's supposed to be going into the main maps. But yeah, here's all the counters for the U.S. stuff. Whatever you need to pull out. You know what formation colors you need. You know, they have the neutral formations, the actual formations themselves. And then you go to the admin. You know, we've got the admin counters. Again, search the admin counters. You know, all the admin counters that are in the game are available. Uh, main maps I already showed you. And then, of course, the East German stuff. Again, just go in here, pull out whatever you need, and then clone it. Uh, and if you accidentally do delete the counter you need, you pull that out. And oops, I accidentally deleted it. 
you just hit the time rewind time button here up at the top sometimes it goes into five seconds oh come on oh it may have put it back in the admin box let's check the admin box or the East German box search yeah it just put it right back into the box so there's the t72 so and I that I had accidentally deleted so you're not really losing any counties you just kind of hit the rewind button a little bit of course we've got the Soviet forces over here we've got the core rules we've got uh, the player aid card for the sequence of play and here's the module specific rules so we've got the module specific rules again no changes are any different than that or that are in the the full-sized game like so so yeah that's uh that's some of the more basic commands you're going to need to know for tabletop simulator and how you resolve the issue of of the maps not being able to fit three or four maps onto the table um now so say you want to play with a friend so how do you do that so what you do is you hit shift tab and that gen that will bring up uh the steam overlay and i'm hoping you actually you actually might not be seeing this uh, maybe you are actually you probably don't but you have your friends list and then just from your friends list click on whoever you want to invite into the game right click on them it'll bring a drop down menu uh, you see tabletop simulator invite to watch invite to play if, of course i don't have this set up for multiplayer right now but so that's how you do that you do that through the steam overlay of shift tab and as long as they're in the game actually even if they're not in the game it'll go ahead and uh pull them into the game and load the game up and then they'll jump in but you have to make sure that you have set the room to multiplayer before you start doing this um there is a line of sight tool and again you may want to watch a more complete uh video on the tabletop simulator abilities you've got a whole bunch of options over here draw zone line flick combine text you know you've got a whole bunch of different stuff over here you can play with i don't know what most of those buttons do because i've never had a need to use them but using one of these tools over here you can draw a line from the center of the hex to another center of the hex so you at least do have a line of sight or just do what i do and put myself directly above the map grab a piece of paper on my side and or a rubber band and physically physically do it like I were I was sitting at the table with a rubber band to to check line of sight um but again yeah this is this is the world at war this is the this is the full version that will allow you to play every scenario if you either already own the main game uh or choose to pick up the module scenario rule book um one of the good things about steam oh well not that not that that's important because we're not charging for it but only one person needs to really own uh the module when you invite someone into your room it'll download the module to them so even if you for example you have a pay module uh that you paid for you can invite people into the room that haven't paid for it it's kind of like real life i mean it's like one person buys the game everybody can enjoy it um we've also got a time a clock here just because you know it's always a good idea to know what time it is uh what are some other features that i can show off real quick oh my favorite one of course <laughs> the flip the table button uh I, I like the flip the table button but of course you always got the rewind time button so you can go back to back to doing that and then there's the modding and there's a notebook in here where you can jot down your it says rules but it's basically a notepad so you can make notes to yourself um objects you probably won't need this very often but uh let's see components say you want a different uh say you need a calculator or something you can just pull a calculator drop it right onto the board you know, easy as that if you need a bag for whatever reason uh if you need a counter you know the clock what have you there's a whole bunch of options that tabletop simulator gives you i just can't and won't go over all of them because most of them don't really pertain to our specific games but yeah that's uh that's what we got here um always it's best fused with voice comms again our discord channel has several voice comms that we don't mind people using so we'll just go ahead and pop over in the discord and i'll put the link in the chat below 
So you can come in and, and join our join our Discord. We like we like having people. It's been a little bit quiet here lately. But uh, this is World at War. This just got released like two days ago for the full version to go in in conjunction with either the people who own the full rules or the people who want to pick up the module, the spring, the spiral bound module rules on their and scenarios on their own. We're just giving more people more options on different ways that they can play. And so people can play the way they want to play. There's a lot of people that prefer Vassal. That's fine. I didn't can't say I prefer Vassal, but I've played I've used Vassal for such a long time. We now have got Tabletop Simulator, which is actually I prefer much better. There's there's one thing that Vassal does that Tabletop Simulator really can't do, uh, and that's when you uh, cursor over a stack of units. Uh, Vassal does the explosion, the exploding counter pile, so you can see specifically what's in. They can't really do that too much in uh, Tabletop Simulator, but really everything else Tabletop Simulator does so much better. Uh, in my humble opinion. Um, but yeah, so whatever platform you want, we're giving you the option to play the way you want. I think that's about it. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. And let's see if I can find the button. See ya.